right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from SalesPop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Thomas Druyen, who is in Dusseldorf, Germany today. How are you doing, Thomas? Hi, John. Uh, great to hear from you. Uh, I have two institutes, uh, and I'm the dean and uh, the founder of these two institutes. Uh, but of course, I'm a member of the University, Sigmund Freud University since the beginning since 2005 okay and it's the only university uh, in, in in europe uh, as far in europe for sure but maybe worldwide where you can study psychoanalysis from the beginning and of course also uh, psychology I mean, right so we are surrounded by psychologists yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, hopefully you won't be psych psychoanalyzing me today. We'll focus on other things. Uh, um, so what we're going to talk today about is this whole uh, concept of future psychology. So, Thomas, maybe you just want to baseline it for the audience and explain what uh, future psychology is. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, we are, most of all, we will remember Freud. You know? Sure. As soon you have a psychological problem or an emotional problem, uh, uh, you, you went to somebody and Freud found a way and, and to uh, the right therapy. I mean, he tried to get access to the subconscious. That yeah. was his huge contribution to, to science. And, and he really found a new way of getting deeper inside of yourself. But what really worried us in the last years, particularly after a huge study which we made for Europe, about the status of mind uh, in these changing times, we found out, particularly for Germany, that the Germans are incredible, inc really incredible resilient, that they can almost solve every problem, but they have a lot of fears towards the future. Mm. And, and, and this is a bad habit in these days because we all have to change quite almost every day, you know. And so we have the, the I think we have the wrong uh, uh, mindset. Uh, we see it in different angles. We see it in, in politics. We see it in many business aspects. Unfortunately, Germany, of course, is still strong as an economy and as a cultural country. But in digitization, we uh, are behind. Mm. And that has uh, something to do with our huge industry, which is very strong. But we went on the train of digitization and all that uh, very late. We have a different picture in, 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 in digital uh, artificial intelligence, but this is not our subject. What, after these studies, we wanted to find a way to create a, pre, uh, a prevention. Uh, anticipation of problems by right. waiting till the problem is catching us. So let's go through particular uh, uh, imaginative situations and solve something. Uh, right. And then we develop a compass, a kind of future compass. If we would do it together, John, I would ask yes. you around 100 questions. And mm -hmm. all these questions will start around your life, uh, will start in 15 or 20 years. Ah. So I will, I will ask you, you know, to give me answers which you have probably never given before. This is the precondition because we don't want to hear anything about uh, problems. We don't want to hear about your current situation. You know, we don't want to hear anything about ready-made philosophies, right. you know, which you have said already 500 times or 5,000, because we also want to avoid that people are lying. I mean, these days, mm -hmm. most of the people are lying, not because <laughs> they have a bad character, because they are my, they are, their opinions are changing several times a day or yes, a week, yes. you know? Yeah. So, and, and I think that... And, and, people, and people, are, people confuse opinion with fact these days, right? You know, people yeah. think that an opinion is a fact when it's not, it's just an opinion. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's also a problem... Uh, related with media, but in mm -hmm. general, we have more knowledge than ever before in our history. Right. You know? And uh, of course, the exponential growth of knowledge, we can't handle this with our brain. I mean, right. we, have to, we have to use uh, 
and train our brain for another five years just to learn something in this direction. And there's none, nobody in this world, no Nobel laureate, no CEO and no president who is able uh, to get a big picture easy like Da Vinci or, or something. Right. It's just basically too big, too much knowledge. So we have no answer to this exponential growth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. We see it in various, in various fields of, of our societies uh, that, we don't, that we don't understand anymore everything. So we have more knowledge than ever before, but less understanding, which is a problem. You know? So we have to do something with our brain. And we read a lot. We, we asked a lot. We went to Singularity University, of course, and, and all over the planet. But nobody really was working with imagination, fantasy. And in the end, uh, of St Steve Jobs or whoever, mm -hmm. it's all about creativity. Yeah. I mean, if you want to find out something about the future, don't go to, to uh, uh, Boston Consulting or whoever. Uh, 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 see a great movie or Star Wars or her, your Jordan Phoenix, whatever. It is art and literature who brought us in the last two and three hundred uh, years uh, an, an, an idea of what could happen. I mean, Star right, Wars right. predicted so many things which are usual today. So mm -hmm. and that's why we, fact, we have to develop a new kind of psychology. It's a future psychology because we just talk with these people about their future. We are training through these questions, the reflection, we call it preflection, uh, of imagination. So if you think now about uh, several other uh, biographies you could have, or you could have had, you know, right. and, you do, and you do this regularly, for sure something will change in, the, in, in your neuronal network. And that's exactly what we want. We yeah. are extending the neuronal network. We are accelerating your capacity to think quicker. And most of all, we try uh, to, uh, uh, to learn to unlearn. This is something what people, uh, 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 it's very difficult for people. If you have a successful... Sorry. Yeah, because people, because let's face it, right? Most people, you know, a lot of people today are maybe, as you said, I mean, they're overwhelmed with the pace of change today. Anyway, um, they're overwhelmed with all the different moving parts in their own lives. So looking, looking into the future and seeing this change accelerating and all of that is is a very is is quite frightening in many ways, which means that you end up probably getting the opposite reaction you're looking for from a lot of people is that they almost want to shut down, right? And try and hold things where they are today. Of course, because we don't have any kind of architecture of the future anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, 30 years ago, uh, you studied law, you became a lawyer, yeah. and you, you were through uh, most of the times, you know? You went to a particular university, you studied something, and you got a job. Today, my son is 13 years old. I don't know, and he don't know what will happen in five years. Yes. Almost nothing, you know. And this is very difficult for a psyche yeah, not to know what's going on. And this is creating all over the world insecurity. And this, yeah. is, this world right now is full of insecurity. You know, I think this is also a reason for many Trump uh, electors or others, you know, because it, it if you are under pressure, you know, you need something which you can trust. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, unfortunately, the cheapest thing, the absolutely cheapest thing to get an idea of the next days is to hate somebody. It's awful, but it's, it's psychology, you know. It, it needs much more energy to think positive or to change yourself. And it doesn't matter in which area you live. If you are too successful, we know it from Europe, we know it from Germany. The, the wealthy people are the people who are the ones who are most afraid because they know everything is changing and they think times are getting not better. That means their future is under the warning sign of danger, of getting not more, getting less. No, that's why they just fight and take all the energies into keeping the status quo. This mm -hmm. is not a good, uh, not a good precondition to do new technology 
or artificial mm. intelligence. Of course, not everybody is like this. So mm. what we're trying to do, and we, we made uh, five, more than 5,000 interviews, we started it also in Shanghai. So I did mm -hmm. with young Chinese people, totally different mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, I was, going to, I was going to say, so what was, when you do it sort of with Europeans and then you go to Asia and you do it, you know, with Chinese or whatever, what, what are there remar are there really distinct differences in the, in the way they approach it? Okay, we could talk about it now for hours. Uh, sure, yeah, just on a, on a very, on a very superficial it, level. To make it very short, if I just take the interviews in three different cities, yeah. uh, we, we take Berlin, we take Shanghai and we take Marrakesh in Morocco. Mm -hmm. uh, then before I did the interviews, uh, uh, for me, it was clear. I mean, Berlin, yeah, very future oriented, great fancy city. You can do everything, sure. art, um, incredible. You meet the whole world a little bit like in New York now. Fantastic. So, but the mindset over there, in the wealthy surroundings in politics is totally conventional, totally conservative. They have a huge problems. I would, on a psychological point of view, there are people, I think around 20, 25% who have some kind of depression already. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, you know, yeah. and, and that is totally paradoxical. In Shanghai, you really enter the future. Everything is faster. Yeah? I mean, they buy, they, 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 they build a little city within Shanghai in seven months. Uh, in mm -hmm. Germany, it takes seven years. This speed is so incredible. And the people are talking faster. They are moving faster, you know. And in Germany, the last 30 years were fantastic. So the future, they have a lot of doubts. And that is reducing the, the capacity of, of hope, of energy. In Shanghai, everything is waiting for the future because the future is the only way to reach money, to reach reputation, and so on. And now, the third city, Marrakesh, of course, kind of, I mean, it's Africa. You know? Sure. Uh, different circumstances. But since their past is so horrible and their expectations were so bad, through the digitization, the young people, they can make big moves now. Even yes. if you are totally poor, just through a smartphone, suddenly you have access. You know? We have students in the University of the King uh, uh, in, in, in the area of Marrakesh. Uh, they, they come from African countries and they, they are participating either through smartphone or nowadays we are using, since, since six weeks, Oculus Rift. VR wow. Yeah, wow, we wow. make classes, you know, they don't have to come there. I mean, it's changing so rapidly. And even as a professor, I mean, I start my courses when I want to. I invite people, even people who haven't the, the, the certificates to study. You know, it, It's a huge experimental situation. And the people are looking forward really positive. I mean, of course, not the sure. poor people, that unfortunately. But but, it, but, it's, it's but the point, yeah. But the the point is, though, you're right. Through through digitization and through uh, you know broadband internet and the promise of five G and all of this, it means that uh, there is the capacity for decentralization of work in a way that was never possible before. So you know, once upon a time, you had to concentrate you know, the brightest and the best somewhere, like say Silicon Valley, they had to be in Silicon Valley, right? Now, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a knowledge worker or you're working with, with um, you know, technology or whatever, you can pretty much be anywhere in the world. So it's, there's a certain, doc, if you like, democratization that's taking place that's going to radically alter the, the balance of, of, of power in many ways. I totally agree. First of all, uh, we strongly uh, involving the virtual uh, reality as we call it immersive learning. Mm -hmm. Most of our classes are in, in our virtual institute already. And the people just, they needed a computer. Now they just need the glasses uh, from Google. Yeah. I mean, it's Google could be whatever, but it's, it works very good. But the other thing is we need a new mindset. I mean, exponentiality, virtual reality, 
uh, so many uh, new surprising uh, developments in polit politics all over the place. Nothing is secure anymore. This is a totally new situation, and that's why we have, that's our opinion, to train the brain. Mm -hmm. Because you can't find the right wisdom yeah, to find the right decision for yourself. That's why the future of psychology try, tries to develop with everybody who is taking part a life or self uh, architecture, mm. yeah? several ones. Yeah? So that from this incredible growing mountain of knowledge, you can select the things you need. Otherwise, you are overwhelmed. What I'm looking for, I can study everything. What should I study? You know? And that's why we have to focus things. And to train focusing, for example, it's much easier in, in a virtual reality. With these yeah. glasses, if you have a dialogue, you know, you are totally concentrated. You have no noise outside. <laughs> it's really, I mean, we are using it now since eight months and uh, it's changing everything. Our personal belief is that psychology of also brain research, all that will become a natural part of everyday life. Right. So it has to go into, into schools, it has to go even in kindergarten, you know, young uh, girls and boys have to learn about this human platform. We talk a lot about our platforms in these last years, and platform sure. is something very important, even more important than countries uh, in, in the future, no. But we forget about our own platform. Mm -hmm. If we carry on like this, definitely artificial intelligence will take over. Uh, and and just among the two of us, John, the ethical uh, performance of humanity is awful. You know, we, we had, I think, more than one billion point four uh, people from the beginning in human history, and ninety percent had a horrible life. So uh, why, should, no, why are we really proud on our civilization process? Yeah, I mean, I don't. So maybe a robot will uh, act in a totally different way. Uh, yeah, or or not, or who knows? <laughs> or not. But we are afraid of robots mm. and artificial intelligence because we have the fear that they will act like us. You know. Uh, us well, here's, and, and here's an interesting thing as well, Thomas, as I was mentioning this to um, somebody else, I think it was Professor Malik, uh, when I was talking to um, a week or two ago. But it's really interesting if you think of some of the most innovative companies in the world with in breakthrough technologies or breakthrough business models, uh, when they grow, they adopt suddenly very traditional models of hierarchy and how they operate and all of this. And it's, and it's funny that you say what you say about the human psychology, because it's almost like, yes, you can be creative with the technology, you can be creative with the business model, but people have a problem with being creative about the human capital that surrounds it. Absolutely. I mean, this is, this is the main point, and this will decide about the future. And the other thing, what you said, I mean, Zuckerberg is a good example. You know, uh, it doesn't matter where you start, where you start, where you have started, and how fast you become filthy rich and successful. Mm -hmm. You are suddenly you are trying to copy traditional ways. Yes. Hierarchy. That's a genetic, a biological program inside of us, more or less, or, or Darwinism. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It, it's not, it is not the, the normal process that you become incredibly successful and automatically ethical. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> the opposite. And if you look at the successful people in Silicon Valley, I mean, they send their kids uh, there sure. and they should play with, with wooden uh, uh, game, you know what I mean. Wooden yeah, figures, yeah, they don't allow him to, to, to be too, too digital. I mean, that's also very, inter very interesting. So yeah. we have to, the only, the only, the only source for the future uh, uh, to be able to use artificial intelligence and all that is if we get access to our subconscious. Mm -hmm. Because there we can really create another 20, 30% of, of, of capacity, of personality. So, because then we can decide that all new technologies are a part of our life architecture. And the digitization and all the technology is working uh, uh, under our control. 
yeah. or it will be vice versa. I have no idea. Maybe this is the process. Maybe civilization, we are just a, a, a breakthrough story. Yeah? It's, we have a very short story. You know? Because if you see the new technology, for example, uh, in, in languages, I mean, a robot can learn a language, a uh, hundred languages in, in two minutes. I love yeah. it. You know, yeah. we can't do this. You know? no. And if you look at this, I mean, all what we have discovered is filling our needs and an extension of what we can't do. It makes sense. It is just not making sense if this is like Frankenstein, it is <laughs> afterwards, it's controlling ourselves. Yes, ourself. yeah. So we have tried to find control. But what is our main task? I mean, we are talking about the, the, follow, the, the effects of digitization, artificial yes. intelligence. There's another huge problem, which is more actual. We have 15% who can live like you and me and, uh, and, and the, the real rich ones, not us. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. yeah, sure. Not, not us, yeah. Not <laughs> us, but 80% have nothing, almost, mm -hmm. you know. And then I think we have to think about it as well. Do we yeah. use technology to invite others to be successful? If we want to carry on with capitalism, we need customers. Yeah, we can't yeah. just sell ourselves uh, every day something new, you know. Yeah. So, and I think, and I think, getting back to your point earlier, though, there's part of this is as well as, you know, as you say, there's a lot of angst out there. There's a lot of anger. People are getting upset all the time about things. But there's no, but there's lacking a level of perspective because what you just said there is okay. So there's eighty percent of the world. There's people who have no clean drinking water, whatever like that. Those are things that are worth getting upset about, but the you know the news and the media we're going to spend the whole time getting upset about stupid things right and then elevating them to like these are things that everybody should care about when we it, and it lacks perspective and i think that's part of if we're going to develop a, a a future that works for everybody we have to introduce some perspective and everything what happens in media an article a film whatever a new technology it has to go through your own brain yeah. Everything, you know. So, and if you are overwhelmed with these catastrophes, you know, you have to find a way to compensate this. And mm -hmm. the easiest way to do it is to start to, as I said, hi, hate others or say awful things in social media. You know, it's a kind mm -hmm. of compensation. You know, and that's why we are we are creating also uh, uh, bad news all all the time. There are good news. We all know this since Marshall McLuhan. I mean, but yeah. nobody is interested in that. And that's, it is easy if we analyze our brain functions and the chemical processes and the synapses building, then we know why it is like this. And this should everybody know. So that he, if somebody feels, uh, now I try to compensate something uh, through hating or whatever, then he should know it's, it's a neuronal process. It's not really my philosophy or my, my mindset. It's, and this is very important because I think that this kind of future psychology will give everybody more awareness. And mm -hmm. if you want to find the right uh, opinion, or if you want to judge so something, you should know as le at least a little bit. But most of the decisions in these days are purely emotional. Yeah. yeah. That's no, I, in politics, I agree. everything yeah, is emotional. Think, yeah. And I think some of it also comes from uh, on the other side, the technology has, in some ways, all the advances has made people intellectually lazy um, and allowed people to not, you know, especially if you're getting all of this information and you're getting it in sound bites and you're getting it in small chunk. It means, I mean, once upon a time you had to, you know, do some research, maybe like read a whole article or whatever, and people don't do that anymore. They just take snippets. So there's some responsibility on us is that we've become intellectually lazy and we're not we're not critically thinking in the way that we should be. And maybe we are outsourcing our future to technology. Absolutely. And, and this will be very probable uh, when we don't do and activate ourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. very easy... Uh, through all these uh, navi navigation systems in cars or whatever. I mean, a taxi driver in London, we know their brain structure. It's incredible. Yeah. They know 25,000 streets, you know. And if you use your navi, 
after uh, one, two, three years, all these brain parts are dead, you know? Yep. So, and right. if, if my virtual assistant is getting all the information, is reading all the archetypes, I'm still professor, but I'm, I'm done already, you know? So <laughs> it, has, it's had, it has effects. Mm -hmm. But as long uh, the priority is on the money side, you know, we use everything. You know? mm -hmm. So we really have to become more human and I think more, more, more ethical. But just praying uh, doesn't help anything. So I think also what Pipeliner, what you try to do uh, uh, all together, we have to create ethical business. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Even if somebody is behaving well for the community, you know, he should get tax reduction or whatever, because we won't be able to convince people to be better. Nobody wants to be bad, you know, but every life guides you every day to particular challenges and then you act weak, like yes. all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, uh, Thomas, this has been uh, fascinating. Uh, it, it's been a, a, a great interview. Um, before we finish up, uh, can you tell people a little bit more about yourself and, and, and the organizations that you work with? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm 62. I'm a soci I started as lawyer and sociologist. I mean, that is a to totally do two different uh, life perspectives. Mm -hmm. That shows already a little bit my character. I'm a paradoxical <laughs> guy. But, uh, uh, I wanted to become a lawyer. Uh, then I did it, but I was totally unsatisfied. I knew that I wanted to become a scientist. Then I became a scientist. But then I developed new fields. I mean, my biggest field is, we call it here, wealthability. It's, uh, uh, we analyzed for more than 25 years very very rich, very wealthy people. What is money doing with their psyche? That was our research. And then seven years ago, we founded uh, this Future Psychology Institute at the Sigmund Freud Private University. I was always with universities. The last five years, I tried to be a few days a month or two months a year in different countries and different universities. I, it's 20 years ago, I was living for one and a half year in Los Angeles uh, in younger days. That was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I loved it. Uh, but I would call myself uh, really, uh, I'm a born German, uh, a world citizen. Mm -hmm. I spent much time in Africa uh, uh, now again. And I think the best what we have, of course, is, is in between our ears. Uh, that's our brain. And, uh, of course, our empathy. So I have a, I have a, unfortunately, I was married several times, but now I'm very happy with my wife and my son is 13 years old. And this is also a, a scientific subject because this boy, like all the others in this age, they, are, they have a capacity, they know many things better than me right. and than their grandparents. And that's a real problem, another psychological problem. Uh, regarding hierarchy, you know, mm -hmm. and respect and authority. I mean, yep. when I was young, my father knew more till I was, uh, really more till I was 18, 19, 20. And, and sure, sure, sure. Like that, so. Now, he, when he was six years old, he was already able to move smartphones and everything better than me. Mm -hmm. And this is changing something in their brains, for sure. for sure. It's difficult to talk about it. So everything is is going into into vibration and, and yeah. I, mean, I decided many years ago or it's part of my dna uh, i called every year if somebody asked me what will you be or what are you i, I said scout even in western 50 years sure. ago yes. i yeah. loved scouts you know and <laughs> the kind of scout and and somehow i'm healthy and it keeps me, keeps me <laughs> Excellent. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Thomas. Again, thank you for joining us today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.